Yes, thanks, Taylor. And we've managed to find a little bit uh, better visibility than the ones yesterday. The black rhino. Wonderful to see out in the plains. And I think I'm going to actually change my mind and say that black rhino are no longer browsers in my mind because here in the Masai Mara it seems all they do is graze which uh, throws everything out for me because we do know that they are supposed to be browsers it must be down to the richness of the grass here and that's why the elephants are loving it and it seems the black rhino really enjoy it too because I've only eat, seen them eating grass here in Kenya, in the Mara Triangle, but back in South Africa, feed on branches and leaves. And one of the things that is very interesting about black rhino, very similar to that of porcupine, they have something very uh, important in their gut because they do eat a lot of toxic uh, plants. And any normal animal would get very sick and, and could even die from it. But porcupine, black rhino and also oryx or chemspok are able to eat very toxic plants, including one on the spot within half an hour. And that's being the Euphorbia damarana, which when you break one of those, it looks like branches, but it's actually modified uh, leaves. And uh, if you break one of those, the liquid or the poisonous milky latex literally pours out of those holes uh, where you've broken them from. And it is incredible that these rhino can stomach that. They must have uh, something in their, di in their stomach which neutralizes it. Now, first, Lady Shah, you're wondering what the function is of those two horns, well, it's made mainly down to defending themselves against each other, mostly, but they can also use it very adeptly to chase off uh, lions, I've seen them doing it, and uh, you can actually have a look on the Wild Earth uh, Facebook page, because there's uh, a video there that I recently commented on, uh, because it comes from Namibia, where there, there was a black rhino that was caught in a water hole and the lions saw their chance and they came down and they tried to uh, attack her. Eventually she managed to get out of the water hole and uh, she very adeptly chased them all off with her horn. So a very good weapon that she uses and they use and I've actually seen uh, a fight to the death between two male black rhinos next to a water hole in Itosha National Park. Right, folks, so this is absolutely fantastic. And one of the big five, and we are having a lovely view of them. Now, speaking of big five, I'm going to send you on all the way down to South Africa with Tristan, who's got another one of the big five to show you. Thanks, Taylor. Yep, we haven't gone anywhere because it's been a lovely sighting of these uh, black rhino here. And while we're looking, you can see when the... Ear on the right, there we go. Look at that notch on the ear. And that is a very triangular notch, and I can pretty much guarantee you that that has been done by the conservation management here, there. So that is one of the ways of identifying rhino. And so all the data of this animal is has been recorded and that particular notch there will be how they identify this particular animal. So they'll have its number written down and what they do is they take little notches out of their ears at different places and they can do square ones and triangular ones and then that all adds up to a particular number according to the particular quadrant and area where they put the notch. So you can have squares and triangles and then it obviously equals uh, the particular um, equation that they have for the rhino and the ear. Very interesting that in terms of conservation efforts as the other one starts walking through. I'm sure if we get a nice view of his ears we'll be able to see that 
It's probably been notched in a different spot. There we go, on, on his left ear, your right as you're looking at the screen, but right on the top. Not that ear that you can see now, the one that is covered by his body. Not that one. We need to see the other one. Can you turn your head? Now, Rihanna, you're wondering how many black rhino are left in the wild. Well, the number has uh, not been released in the last little while because of all the poaching. So it's um, a little bit of guesswork at the moment. We do know that we had in excess of, of uh, 20,000, but uh, those numbers have dropped quite dramatically. And so the numbers are on the decline and it's I think it was last year when they finally went past uh, the uh, born animals versus the animals being killed so we've we've hit the threshold and we've just um, uh, exceeded it now uh, with poaching but um, in the Maasai Mara and the Mara area there's uh, here in particular in the Mara Triangle I think there's only 15 black rhino and it has uh, they have brought their numbers up slightly and uh, I think over the entire area there's a little bit over a hundred so there is a decent amount of black rhino in this area the largest population of black rhino in the world is in Namibia and there they do very well but they've also only just recently had a couple of uh, poaching incidents and it's all down to the horns that they have in the front there uh, fetching very high prices of now um, around 70,000 US dollars per kilogram and it's very sad because they're actually useless. It is exactly the same compound as your nails or your hair. So keratin being what it's made up of. Um, and so all the uses that uh, these people are using all around uh, in different countries, it's not only one country that is uh, to blame. There's many different countries that are using rhino horn in a powdered form uh, for all sorts of medical conditions and aphrodisiacs and cure for cancer and whatnot. But it is uh, fetching a very high price. It's worth more than gold. So you can imagine the kind of people that are uh, very keen to get their hands on a bit of rhino horn. It's very sad because the animal doesn't uh, really need to die for them to get a hold of that. If the animal was darted and it just cut off, like you cut your nails off, it would regrow. And uh, unfortunately, they, um, they generally kill them. And then they cut the horn off and then they trade with that. But there is also two arguments around it being illegal or legal. I'm not going to give you my opinion on which one I think is better. But at the moment it is illegal and it is trading on the black market. And it's doing very well on the black market. And um, it's all with the underground... Um, uh, drug type uh, syndicates that are trading in this and the argument is that if they make it legal uh, they could flood the market with their stockpiles that they have of uh, farmers that have these and also nature reserves that have stocked them up Now, Joy, you're wondering a very good question. Do black rhino and white rhino have the same footprint? Now, while we're looking at those black rhino, I'm just going to find uh, the two different tracks in my book before we come back, and then I will show you exactly the difference. So just give me one moment while I rummage through my very worn tracking book that I've had for many years and it's been wet and it actually fell in the river once and I was very surprised that it wasn't totally destroyed but it's still here and it's still my little tracking bible but I just need to find where the rhino are there we go now if Archie can just come in and have a look here 
Okay, so where we took talking about the hooked lipped rhino, this is the rhino that you are looking at, the black rhino, the other name for it. Now what's very important to see here, obviously the black rhino in general is a little bit smaller than the white rhino, so the the track itself is a little bit smaller, um, but the toes, which there are three of, are a little bit wider spaced uh, and, and closer together as well. Whereas with the white rhino very close together on the toes and um, but it's a lot more spaced because they've got a lot more weight on them and so they they need to spread the surface area of their track a little bit more in order to take all of that weight toes being much bigger and I often say both of these tracks very much look like a uh, uh, a worker in a warehouse with um, uh, uh, the hard hat at the top and the uh, uh, earmuffs on the side so at the bottom we have a hippo track and these are the large animals that you will find around that um, on the other page being that of elephant so that the round one being that of the front foot and the very elongated uh, one being the back foot so that's just an idea folks of of the lovely tracks obviously this is reduced so it's not the real size but you can see a lovely picture there of how black and white tracks uh, black and white rhino tracks look so everybody I think these black rhino are now starting to disappear a little bit uh, through the plane so we're going to start up we're going to head around and we're going to go and see what else we can find on our way up towards the Olololo escarpment but in the meantime let's send you on down south to South Africa and Steve